Praise the Lord to all of my listeners. It's your girl, Practice Pastor Teresa Moten, once again, coming to you with her apostolic voice. I come to enlighten you and to encourage you, and I hope that something I say today out of the mouth of God will help you and bring you up and out of Egypt in some form or fashion in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you tonight for the word, and we ask God that you move by your spirit. Have your way in the name of Jesus, that someone will say, what must I do to be saved? Or Lord, I hear your voice, and I want to turn back to you this day in Jesus' name. God bless you. At this time, we're going to turn to the book of Ecclesiastes. I have been in Ecclesiastes for so long in chapter 12, and it's such a wonderful book. And it will help you to know that life is so futile and that we can't take things for granted, but always remember God in your beginning. And that's why I encourage people that if you have children, bring them to church because the children are our next generation. But if you don't teach them about God, that next generation is lost. Amen. So let's turn there real quick. If you all will, let's turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Amen. Now we know that the author was Solomon. Amen. It was written about 935 B.C. And late in Solomon's life. Amen. But in this passage of, um, I would say this book in 12 and in 1, uh, it lets us know the key verses. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. God bless. Let us start in verse 1. Remember now. You know when you hear now, stop. And it's happening. Now. So it's starting to be right now that God is speaking. So wherever you are in your walk with God, remember now. Where are you right now? Remember now, okay? Thy creator in the days of what? Thy youth. How many know because when the writer is saying your youth, we're going to get old one day. And anybody that lived a certain amount of time, you can tell the difference how you serve God from the beginning and now. Even sometimes when you wake up in the morning, you don't even want to get on your knees. Because, you, you know, it hurts sometimes to get down on your knee. I'm just keeping it 100. I know some of y'all just, oh, y'all just so vibrant. I'm older and I'm 66, so I don't get down on my knees like I used to. I get down there, I do what I got to do, and I get up, and then I pray on the side. Amen? Come on, give God praise. So he said, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh. When thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. It's going to be times when you're going to say, I don't have no pleasures even getting up. You know, there's some people when they got older, you know, the older you get, your world gets smaller. So there's going to be days where you're not going to even have pleasures in looking in the mirror. So you've got to remember how good it was when you were young. And while you're serving God now, you're stirring up for tomorrow. There's going to be a time where you may not even remember the scripture. But the scripture is down in your sanctified soul. Somebody else, hey, you ought to praise him. Praise him for right now. Yes, and, and life without God, it will not produce a good life. I'm going to tell you that. You can try all you want. I was just sharing that with a sister. I said, yeah, they might have the education part down pat, but do you have Jesus? Yes. I'd rather have Jesus than the education. Because yeah. sometimes you get the education, you walk off and leave Jesus because you're too smart. Oh, I don't know why I said that. Somebody going to hear that under the sound of my voice in here. Amen. So by the sun or the light or the moon or the stars, be not darkened. So light get darker, y'all. You know what? When you're young, everything looks like the light is on. Oh, Jesus. You walk outside, the sky bluer than you ever seen it. You get old, you go, it's dreary. Come on, because you know what? My responsibility as a person, as a human, it begins to get heavier and heavier. Futile means it's fleetly passing away. My life is fleetly passing away. Young people don't worry about what they go through. We worry about, from, oh, how are we going to pay the rent? Young folk go in there and make a sandwich and go lay down in the morning and wake up to the next day. They ain't stuck no rent, no car, no 
cut missing. They'd be like, where the car at? You didn't pay it. Come on. Because you know what? They don't care. When you young, you act like you young. But when you become old, you got more responsibility. Am I right about it, brother? Yeah. You worry about, is my insurance paid? Is my, my insurance paid? Come on. You know you got to have some insurance when you ride down the street. Yeah. Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise. Some folks don't care. They, they ain't clapping because they ain't stuck nothing. <laughs> they ain't worried about, did, did the brick get paid last month? But those that know the responsibility of rent, they can understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. Come on, give me praise. That's not act like we over here living scot-free. So don't waste your time on evil, meaningless things, meaningless things. Don't waste your time on idle stuff that will not bring you a return spiritually. You need to put your time on God and the things of God. If you want to live a good and wholesome spiritual life, you got to build your hopes on things eternal. Those are the things that won't fade away like the grass. Somebody praise them with me today. And the Bible says in verse number three, let's read that together. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble and the strong men shall bow themselves and the grinders cease because they are few and those that look out of the window be darkened and the door shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low and he shall rise up and the voice of the bird and all the daughters of music shall be brought low also when they shall be afraid of that which is high and fears shall be in the way and almond trees shall flourish and also the grasshopper shall be burdened and he said the desires shall fail. You're going to have desires that fail. It said because man go up to his long home and the mourners go about the streets or ever the silver cord be loose or the golden bowl be broken or the pictures be broken of the fountain, or the wheel broken of the cistern. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return into God who gave it. Vanity of vanity. I said the preacher all is vanity. How many know all this is vanity? Whatever uh, you put before God and you idolize it, that is your God. Uh, like I said before, you know, some people, and I don't know why I'm going here, Lord, help me today. And I'm not trying to call nobody out. But you can't depend on weed to be your God. Amen. And I don't even know why I'm saying it because this thing, this weed epidemic is getting too big. Yeah. Yeah. They got these foundries and these plate weed plants everywhere. Don't even have education systems in place. Don't even have activities for kids after school in place. But you got weed foundries everywhere. We take authority over that thing. And we lose the power of the anointed one, Jesus Christ. Your life is fleeting when you're young. And guess what? You better pull everything that you're doing in the sight of God. Line it up. Line upon line, precept upon precept. Here, little family, you need to turn everything over to God. He said, vanity, old oh, vanity. It's going back to the dirt. Everything that you building on in your flesh, guess what? You can't take it with you when you leave this earth. That's right. You got to do the things that's going to prosper you. If you only knew what's on the other side, you wouldn't even fight to have this that much. Anybody ever had an encounter? I had an encounter. I've been, I've seen what it is to see what heaven is like. I know that it's beautiful on the other side. I know the presence of God. I don't even want to talk. I just want to worship him. Because I know it is presence is fullness of joy. The Bible says that pleasures at his right hand. Somebody better get ready for that. Come on, turn your stuff over to God tonight. And say, all that matters is what God wants me to have. Somebody give him praise tonight. I'm not here tonight to be your best preacher. I'm a preacher sent by God. 
So I might just tap dance on a few toes sometime. I don't mean no harm, but God says, say what I say and mean what I mean. Yeah. We cannot compromise the word of God. I don't care if it's your family. Amen. You got to tell them what thus said the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Life is passing. The Bible says life is like a vapor. Do you know you could be a big old wholesome somebody and be out of here like you didn't wear a feather? So that lets you know you're, no, you're nothing. You're going back to the dust. Huh? Didn't the word of God say that? Earth, dirt, ashes, to ashes, and dust to dust. We going back there, y'all. I don't care if you got the biggest house on the hill. Your bank account could be the longest one, but you're going back to the dust. Oh, give me praise. I got you quiet now. I got your attention. Come on. The Bible says, and this is what I love, starting at verse 9. And it talks about fearing God and keeping his commandments. It says, and moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. Those proverbs is always something to come back to remind you, little short stories and even poetry, just to remind you how good God is. When we say, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, he is good. Yes, is. Anybody ever had an encounter where you say, oh, Lord, I thank you. You ever had an encounter where you're sick, couldn't get well, and then when you went back to the doctor, they said, you don't have cancer. You shout all over the place. Oh, come on, give God praise. You don't even have to have cancer. Just get sick and can't get well. The woman with this your blood, I guarantee she said, oh, taste the same God is good. Because she exhausted everything. When you get out of God's way, he go to work. He want to go to work tonight. I hear that from the Spirit of God. Let me go to work. You done did it your way and it ain't my way. As far as the heaven is above, there are so are my ways above your way. Let God have this thing that you call your journey. You done interrupt the flow. But God said you're on a journey, but you can mess up your destination. Because, because you're on a journey, don't mean you won't get to your destination. Right. While I'm on this, this journey, I want Jesus to walk with me. Yeah. If he ain't walk with you, you're on a different journey. Yeah, right. Come on. Am I walking the path? <laughs> but as long as I know he's walking with me, I'm going to be shouting and everything. I must be healed. I don't even get my head hurt. Come on. Give God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that preacher saw him and found him. And then he said, The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. The words of the wise are as goits and as nails fastened by the master of assemblies which are given from one shepherd. Verse 12, and further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books. There is no end. Much study is a weariness of the flesh. And listen to this, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. See, when all else is going on and when it comes down to ground zero, when it comes down to closing the curtains, Y'all hear what I'm saying? Why you got you think you got it all together? You think you done did all of what it take? You ain't did it yet. You can have all the philosophies, you can have all the ideologies in the world. But this is what the man of God says. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Somebody ought to give him praise right there. Because we got some folks, they throw the rock and they hide the hand. You got to be careful that hey, that's not you. Don't let it be named among you one time. Because Haman built a guillotine 10 feet high. For Mordecai. And look what God did. He gave Mordecai favor because of Esther. Do you hear what I'm saying? Be careful who you're trying to drown, but you better put your swimsuit on because you won't drown. Yeah. Did you hear what I said? Mordecai ended up living and having rank over the providence. 
when Haman hung and lost all his stature. Do you know what I'm saying? Only what you do for Christ will last you. Only what you do in righteousness will keep you. Stop trying to destroy folk. Folk don't even know nothing about you. He put out lies on you. You be like, who are you talking about? Then they tell you the person. Is. You be like, you know the person. That ain't it. Because lies will change a person's viewpoint. Don't let people alter your viewpoint Amen. on good people. Amen. If somebody come with you with negativity, put some water on it. Yes. Breach it with the word of God. Amen. Tell them, say, no, that ain't what I believe. The Lord said, whatsoever things are good and lovely and of a good report, think on those things. Yes. But the Bible says, the conclusion of the matter, yes. fear God. Yes. You better fear him. Because wisdom is the beginnings of that. That's where wisdom step in. When you are afraid of knowing that God is in charge, you're not talking about, ooh, you like that kind of fear. I reverence you, God, because of who you are. I belong to you and you alone. You alone that makes my, listen, nobody have a heaven and hell to put you in. And you, sin can only be sin by the knowledge that you know sin is. Did you know that? The only way you recognize that is sin. Adam and Eve was running that butt naked. But they didn't know they had sin till they sinned. Did you hear what I'm saying? Just like I tell people, stop making other folks feel bad because you eat pork and they don't. You know how folks, oh, you eat that? My husband got it bad. He eats wine. I'm sorry. I know this is going to come back. Somebody's going to write me something. Uh, uh, hit me. <laughs> but stop making folk feel bad because you don't eat it and they do. The Bible says what goes into a man does not defile him. It's what comes out. If your conscience is infected by that chicken wing or that pork, the only way it messes with you, it messes with your mind. But coming through your belly and going out the other end, it ain't going to bother you. It's not good for you to keep eating it because it has sodium in it. But don't condemn a man because he has him a boat chop. I don't even know why I threw that in. Let me stop. Come on, let's give him a break. Hallelujah. Because we are the most critical people. We're so worried about pork chops and ribs, and we should be worried about folks' souls. Your soul is more important to me than a poor chop dead. Come on, give God praise. I'm trying to help somebody get saved. Because we too busy on this feudal stuff. And we need to get on God's stuff. Come on, somebody. And the Lord wants us to, to, you know, be more mindful over the things of God and not fleshly things. Amen. We so busy talking about food that's interrupting us. But what about that uh, nasty food you taking in, gossip and backbiting? Those are spiritual foods that will kill you. Amen? We don't want to work by the flesh. We want to work by the spirit. Tell people how good the person is when they tell you how nasty they are. Come on, give God praise. Y'all looking like y'all on some kind of drug. Come on. I have to say this part. The book of Ecclesiastes cannot be interpreted correctly without reading these final verses, no matter what the mysteries and the apparent contradictions of life are. We must work toward the single purpose of knowing God. We've got to work towards knowing God. Heaven and earth is going to pass away, but his word will stand forever. Somebody give him praise because you've been in the church all your life and you're still doing the same thing. Ain't no reason for you to still be doing the same thing. If you've been around a church a long time and you still fighting that same demon, something is wrong. You shouldn't be fighting the same demon. I can see you fighting some different type of demon. But if you're still fighting that 1999 demon, come on. Put him on sale, let him go. Hallelujah. Let's give him God praise. We God bless you. We hope that the word of God will encourage your heart. I know somebody going to be saved after tonight. Put the devil on sale and sell him off. Ah, you shot. 
Father, we thank you tonight. I ask God if there's anyone under the sound of my voice you have not accepted Jesus. Just open your mouth and repent of your sins. Ask the Lord to come into your heart and save you a sinner. And say, God, I believe you died for my sins and I know you're coming back. I want to go back with you. I confess my sin before you right now, God. And I believe I'm a sinner that needs to be saved. Now, God, save me from all of my sins. Deliver me, set me free. Uh, created me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. I know and I make you Lord over my life right now. In Jesus' name, God bless you. I hope that these words have encouraged your heart. I hope that I said something that will enlighten your spirit and to grow and go higher in Christ. God bless you. Until next time, I am your girl, Prophetess Pastor Teresa Moe with her apostolic voice. God bless.